The Township of Langley, British Columbia has a well-developed enterprise GIS system. The ease and speed of data collection with the TopCon GMS2 is allowing the city's GIS team to provide sophisticated information to the many city services that need it. Two years ago when I arrived at the Township of Langley, there were many different data sets that contained the same information. So there was really no integrity to the data. People didn't know which was the data set to believe in. So we started ensuring the integrity of the data and making sure that we had one source of information. So our mission and the corporate goal uh, for the Township of Langley is one source of information. Currently, the GMAX department is really trying to focus on this one source philosophy that we use, that, it, that everything is located centrally and isn't replicated or copied. It's, it's accessed directly from that one central repository. And then each one of the individual departments has data custodians that actually maintain their respective data sets. We've been working with the departments and trying to bring them together um, to say, well, these guys need this and you guys need this, but we're talking about the same feature, so how do we make it work for both of you? We have such uh, data sets as orthophotography, we have satellite imagery, um, GIS vector data, we have image data like the as-built drawings and the legal survey plans in image format. Some of our data is based on our air photos, which were flown in 2005, um, and they're 10 centimeter accuracy, so they're fabulous. We also have a DEM layer that came with them, so we have uh, one meter contours for all of Langley, uh, which we use quite extensively using a tin um, to do things like floodplains and that kind of stuff. We also get information back in GPS format, like from a GPS unit. The way I look at it is it enhances your processes and it can create more integrity in your data. For example, we can utilize orthophotography to validate lot corners, but you also get shading, you get the angle of the camera, so you can't really determine if what you're showing in your GIS is accurate based on your orthophotography, but you can go out into the field and even with submeter accuracy you can validate the location of lot corners or the location of a bridge or the location of a park bench. We are collecting what are called pulpit locations for our fiber line network. Basically we have a, a fiber line that runs from our operations building all the way to the new civic facility. The GMS2 is really easy to use. So what we're utilizing for our uh, real-time correction is in the, in the GVRD, which is the Greater Vancouver Regional District. My pocket PC creates a um, dial-up network connection to that, to that real-time network via cell phone connection. And that cell phone beams a Bluetooth signal uh, over to my GMS2 and uh, it sends via Bluetooth the corrected signals to the GMS2 while it's taking readings. Uh, the accuracy that we're, that we're receiving from that real-time correction network is anywhere down to 30 centimeters uh, accuracy, mm -hmm. so which is very, very accurate and that's really valuable for us. The departments that ask for data or maps the, the most are probably the in environment, engineering, planning. Also, the fire department is a big user. Well, with the fire department, we have public hydrants and private hydrants. However, the um, fire department needs to know where they all are. So we set up with a GMS2 uh, a system to go out and catalog those. We're out there doing the inspections anyways, and that's something that we're looking for is hydrant accessibility and, and condition. So it's very easy for us to take uh, the handheld unit during an inspection and, and click in the, the certain fields and gather the information. For each individual task, I prepare them at the beginning of the day and give them all their background information like road center lines and aerial photography and I'll load that all into the GMS2. I have a bunch of uh, domains set up for each of the fields and when you check that data out, uh, those domains come across as drop down forms automatically. So it's very easy for the fire department guys when they're out there collecting the information, as soon as they digitize a point. Uh, a form pops up automatically and they just do a selection of drop downs and that will give them uh, their information they need for each point. The machine is very firefighter friendly so it's just a matter of going through the process of, with the, the GIS machine and mapping hydrants. In, in some occurrences we found obstructions so we'll, we'll take a quick photo of it. The TopCon device is obviously pretty innovative. I mean when you look at other, other available GPS uh, products um, it's got a number of features built right into it that actually make 
uh, a lot of the data collection quite easy. Being able to take a picture directly using the device rather than having a cart around a, a camera and then uh, keep track of what images you took and then reassociating them to the, the individual features that you've collected. Talk on you to actually lets you take a picture and, and perform that association um, immediately, which is which is a great benefit. It also has a, has a built-in SD card, so you could load a significant amount of uh, information directly on the unit. It's a huge time savings. Another big thing is the fact that it uses the Russian GLONASS satellites, which is huge. Uh, other systems we've seen don't use those. So for, for instance, if we have somebody who's trying to GPS a point or an area that is underneath uh, a tree canopy or beside a building where you're going to get a lot of satellite blockage, a lot of interference, the, the capability of having the Russian GLONASS satellites is definitely a huge advantage. The software that's, that's used, TopPad, is basically uh, a, a version of ArcPad with a bunch of bells and whistles added to it that are, that are quite useful. A lot of people that we're sending out in the field are not software savvy, especially when it comes to GIS, uh, but the GMS2 provides an easy to use environment that these people can figure out just on their own, and that's, that's been really helpful. We do plan on using GPS units in the field more often, taking GIS to the field. We have great buy-in for that. The surveyors, the consulting groups want to take, and, and our own staff actually, want to take the GIS data to the field in the GPS unit itself, take that GIS out into the field, collect your information and, and sync it right back into the database. It streamlines processes and it actually show, it, it's actually more effective for the crews to have that information digitally than on paper because with the GPS they actually can locate themselves in the area. A lot of our staff is just beginning to understand what GIS and what this data can do for them instead of have them having all these spreadsheets that don't have any spatial context to them. Um, they're realizing that we can actually tie that data to a map and they can look on the, you know, click on it on the computer and find out, you know, all these things about it, which is very exciting. They're uh, very informative. They're always putting new ideas forward and kind of promoting us, pushing us along and, and helping us with the whole process. Streamline it, making it easier for us. Um, we have the, some of the ideas, but not the capability or the knowledge to, to put them in place. So they're, they're making it uh, work best for us, for our needs.